Welcome to the Myeloma University module entitled Bispecifics in Multiple Myeloma. My name is Donna Catamaro and I am a nurse practitioner at the Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City. In this short discussion, we will review the basics of bispecific antibodies in treating multiple myeloma. Now let's begin. Bispecific antibodies are an important class of drugs used in the treatment of patients with multiple myeloma. As the name suggests, these drugs bind to two different types of cells. You can think of bispecific antibodies as having two arms. One arm attaches to the myeloma cell, and the other arm binds to the immune cell, such as a T cell, thus allowing for that immune cell to attack the myeloma cell directly. This dual attack is more effective at helping immune cells bind and kill myeloma cells. There are different binding targets for bispecific antibodies. It's important to consider the target of a bispecific antibody when considering their use. One target is called B-cell maturation antigen, or BCMA. In the last decade, BCMA has emerged as a major target member of the tumor necrosis factor alpha receptor, or TNF superfamily. BCMA is expressed on late memory B cells committed to plasma cell differentiation and are more prevalent on cancer cells. The FDA approved drugs that target BCMA for multiple myeloma starting in 2022 with teclistimab. We will address teclistimab as an example of a BCMA bispecific antibody. In contrast, telquetimab is a bispecific antibody that targets GPRC5D, this tumor-associated antigen with potential anti-cancer activity. GPRC is heavily expressed on myeloma cells, and when given to patients, telquetimab binds to both the CD3 antigen receptor on the T cell and the GPRC5D receptor on the myeloma cell to cross-link like helping hands to redirect that T cell to kill the myeloma cell. So what do nurses need to know about taking care of patients who are receiving bispecific antibodies? First, let's talk about general common toxicities that can be observed regardless of the target. There are currently three top things I like to think about when educating patients and their caregivers on bispecific antibodies. First, we discuss the immune activity and two major side effects such as cytokine release syndrome, or CRS, or immune effector cell-associated neurotoxicity syndrome, or ICANS. In contrast to CAR-T therapy, fortunately, the incidence of ICANS is much lower in patients who receive bispecific antibodies than those who receive CAR-T therapy. Second, we discuss the need for step-up dosing to minimize these possible side effects. Finally, we discuss the increased risk of infection. For bispecific antibodies, the CRS and risk of ICANS occurs most commonly during step-up dosing days. Nurses should be aware of the risk and educate patients to report signs of fever or confusion immediately. While institutional protocols for management of CRS varies, it most commonly consists of starting tocilizumab, an anti-IL-6 drug, at a dose of 8 mg per kilogram IV up to three times in a 24-hour period. This is given with acetaminophen 1,000 mg. Vital signs are monitored every 15 to 30 minutes until CRS resolves. In addition, patients will often be given intravenous fluids. Please check your institutional protocols. Teclistimab is one kind of BCMA-directed bispecific and is given as a subcutaneous administration. A small step-up dose is given on day one. While institutional protocols vary, teclistimab is usually given every 48 hours. Recommended premedications include corticosteroids and histamines, such as diphenhydramine, and an antipyretic, such as acetaminophen. Patients who receive BCMA-directed antibodies are at risk for shingles, therefore, acyclovir or valcyclovir is given. If patients have neutropenia, then they are given prophylaxis with lovafloxacin. Antifungal and PJP prophylaxis should also be considered. For patients with a serum IgG level of less than 400, IVIG is given to minimize the risk of severe infection. Telquetimab uses a step-up dosing schedule based on body weight, with similar corticosteroids and histamine and antipyretic as pre-medications. I find that telquetimab has a different side effect profile than BCMA-directed by specific antibodies, as the target is GPRC5D, with less infection risk, but side effects may include taste changes, dysphagia, glossitis, and oral toxicities. 
To counteract oral toxicities, patients can be given dexamethasone oral solution as a swish and spit, saliva substitutes, and sour citrus candies before meals. To prevent dysphagia, dietary modifications such as taking small bites, eating upright, sips of beverages with food can help manage these symptoms. For glossitis and thrush, initiate nystatin is key to managing symptoms. Weight loss and anorexia can occur, therefore having your patient meet with a nutritionist and considering an appetite stimulant can be utilized. Education and emotional support strategies for patients and caregivers who worry about these taste changes and associated weight loss are critical in getting patients through these symptoms. Skin and nail toxicity can occur as well with telquetamab. Patients should be encouraged to use heavy moisturizers for dry skin and peeling of the skin of the palms and the soles. As nail thinning can occur, nail hardeners, topical vitamin E can be used. For itchy rashes, loratadine or diphenhydramine can be recommended. Despite these interventions, patients will still have taste changes and some skin concerns. If patients are not tolerating telquetamab due to oral toxicities or skin or nail changes, and they are on a good remission or approaching a very good partial remission, then the dose interval can be extended. It is valuable to note that we are often extending the dosing interval of bispecifics in patients who are responding in order for these side effects to improve or even resolve. Quality of life is an important consideration. Other important considerations for patients taking bispecific antibodies include disease monitoring for response as well as infection considerations. And I would like to add that nurses, caregivers, and the entire multidisciplinary team are important to work together to support patients in their multiple myeloma journey. These drugs can be given safely to patients, even frail patients, with appropriate supportive care. Please refer to prescribing information and visit myeloma.org for clinical trial updates as science is rapidly changing. In this module, we discuss bispecific antibodies for multiple myeloma, which is an important part of myeloma therapy. These drugs are approved for patients with relapsed myeloma, but are also available in clinical trials in other settings such as smoldering myeloma, maintenance after transplant, among others. Please encourage patients to be aware of side effects and report these immediately so that we can address and intervene as needed to improve adherence and outcomes for patients. Thank you so much for joining me today to share in this discussion. For more information, please see these additional resources and watch for additional segments in this series. Thank you.